was smoking all my dragons, divine righteous, almighty greats, overachieving, never slacking. Now this man only spent seven and a half years as a heavy player on the world stage. Texas guitar slinger Stevie Ray Vaughan. The legacy he left behind is just mind-blowing. Man, when I first heard Stevie Ray Vaughan play, I was completely blown away. The passion he had on that stage when he would play that guitar. I mean, to see that sweat dripping and to see him just go all out, you could tell he was in another place when he was in his zone. And what really blew me away was the fact that I had never heard of him previous to doing reactions. That really left me in awe. I just couldn't believe how I never heard of this man before. Steven Stevie Ray Vaughan was an American musician, singer, lyricist, and record producer who was better known as the lead singer of the 80s rock band from Texas, Double Trouble. He had a short-lived music career of only seven years, yet Vaughn became the master of blues rock during his time and earned many awards and recognition for it. Stevie came from a middle-class family and music was everything for him. His father struggled with alcohol abuse and often terrorized his family and friends with his bad temper. In later years, Vaughn recalled that he had been a victim of his father's violence. His father died August 27th, 1986, exactly four years before Vaughn himself. Now, one thing that I personally noticed about a lot of great artists is many of them have been through a lot of trauma or had troubled past, troubled childhoods and were able to target all that and channel that and have this laser focus and when they would put it into music it could connect with people emotionally to a level beyond what people could really explain with words like that just think of all your favorite artists that you truly love it was something very emotional and powerful that really connected you to that artist it's crazy how all that trauma can be a curse and a gift at the same time. Stevie once gave an unscripted message where he said, I started off my drinking and using career, oh I guess early 60s, when I was somewhere around seven or eight years old. I grew up in an alcoholic family. My father was an alcoholic, and even though I saw the problems that alcohol caused in our family, I still found it attractive for some reason. I don't know what it was. I was always a kid who was afraid I was gonna miss something. Somewhere along the line, I started trying to find out why my father would go back and continue to drink. Even though every time he did, I saw what happened, which was big fights, you know, violence. We were always real scared of him, but he continued to do it anyway. I never, I never did understand what that was until one day a few years later, I realized that I wasn't doing anything any differently other than making a little bit more money and I'd added a few drugs to it, you know. I guess about seven or eight years old, I started stealing drinks either. Well, my parents used to have these these 42 parties and quite a few people would come over and they'd be having their Tom Collins or whatever, you know. And when somebody wasn't looking, I'd take one of the drinks and run to the kitchen, you know, and make them a new one and refresh their drink, you know. It's just that I would refresh my memory about what it tasted like a lot of the time. I never really thought that it tasted very good or anything. This makes me appreciate Stevie Ray Vaughan more because he was just so open about his addiction and so many people deal with substance abuse. So many people deal with so many things. Sometimes they need to hear something like that. They need to hear what someone who became successful was dealing with because that could be enough to just give them the strength to pull through and realize that they're not alone. I went too far with it. And, uh... I started, instead of just partying, or instead of just drinking to have a drink, I had I had to go off and be obsessive with it. And uh, it just, just doesn't work for me. I wish a lot of people that really that can't handle it would realize that they couldn't, and it'll, they'll, it'll happen in time, you know? But it's, it's, it's something that's a lot harder to deal with than a lot of people realize, you know? And it took me a long time to realize that I knew I couldn't stop. But I have to do something about that and stop. You know. Well, what made you realize suddenly that you got to take control of this? Well, thing? I fell apart. Oh yeah. Yeah, I fell apart. I and there's no. Well, yeah, and, there's, and that 
Well, like I said, I was still playing gigs, but I could, it was physically and emotionally and spiritually just bankrupt. It's really difficult to control that kind of habit. What kind of support system do you have around you? I went through treatment in Atlanta, Georgia. And, uh, and I've got a, a step program, a 12-step program that I live by now. And uh, all the people in that program all my support. Plus, I have, I have uh, the bass player, Tommy Shannon, who's also in the program. And uh, so, is, so is my drum tech and guitar tech. And we, we help each other out. So I personally salute Stevie Ray Vaughan for putting that out there on the table and not just creating a persona that wasn't real for people to just be attracted to. So now knowing that he was always on that alcohol, when you look at certain indigenous cultures and you really study, you'll figure out why they call them spirits. And when you look at Stevie Ray Vaughan, we know it was something spiritual that he was definitely tapping into. Stevie started out in Austin by playing sporadic gigs with garage bands until he found his own band called Double Trouble. The band was first recognized by Mick Jagger and gained popularity when they signed a professional contract with Epic Records. Stevie played mostly Texas blues and personal interpretations of classics such as Jimi Hendrix's Voodoo Child or re-releasing Texas Flood originally by Larry Davis and making it his own. Stevie Ray Vaughan had made a name for himself in the mainstream music scene and has even broken barriers in a traditionally African-American raw genre that is blues music. Stevie Ray Vaughan paid homage to Jimi Hendrix by playing a cover of Voodoo Child, renaming it Voodoo Chili. Stevie Ray Vaughan has been credited for bringing back blues music to a mainstream American audience in the 1980s. The blues revival that started in the mid-1960s attempted to resurrect traditional African-American music styles with a modern feel by implementing rock-inspired performances, new studio technology, and modern-day instrumentation. Stevie was among many who helped carry blues music into the 1980s and cement the blues flair as a true American music genre, able to stand the test of time. Stevie brought a down-home Texas feel to traditional blues music and sprinkled a fast-paced rock feel into many of his songs. On one of my comments in my Stevie Ray Vaughan playlist, I remember seeing someone talk about how they met Stevie Ray Vaughan at a bar and he was so down to earth and just so cool. And that's honestly the vibes I get every time I see him play or hear him speak. He just seems so down to earth and in tune with himself. Let me also not forget to give a big shout out to Stevie's older brother, Jimmy, for being able to play guitar so well. I actually did a reaction to one of his videos not too long ago, and he's amazing. And it's incredible that he's still playing to this day. Vaughn looked up to and admired Jimi Hendrix. His words were, I love Jimmy a lot. He was so much more than just a blues guitarist. He could do anything. I was about 16 when he died. I could do some of his stuff by then, but actually I've been trying to find out what he was doing more so lately than I was then. Now I'm really learning how to do it, and I'm trying to expand on it. Not that I can expand on it a whole bunch, but I try. Whew. Stevie Ray Vaughan was a blues historian, and boy did he pay attention. His love for blues is like the love that Steve Irwin had for animals. It's just something beyond the physical that you can't really express with words like that. Now to go back to what I was saying about this being spiritual for Stevie Ray Vaughan, let me go back to a comment that was on my Stevie Ray Vaughan voodoo child reaction from someone by the name of Melanie Redfield. Wow, the glitching. This will freak you out, but I saw an interview with his drummer Chris Layton and bassist Tommy Shannon. There was a short segment titled Stevie in Electricity. Layton said he thought Stevie had a strange effect on electrical current because he would get shocked from a mic that others touched without a problem or would blow equipment with no apparent cause. It happened very often when you said maybe his energy or spirit was causing the glitching. That's what I was thinking. Now that comment blew me away because Every time I would play Stevie Ray Vaughan and he would just get in that zone and turn up, my equipment would start glitching. That guy is powerful. Stevie Ray Vaughan transitioned after he was killed in a helicopter crash at age 35.
When you look at his childhood and you look at his troubled past, his addictions, he brought all that to the stage with him and he left his heart out and left a legacy to be remembered by forever. And I wouldn't be surprised if him and Jimi Hendrix and other legends are rocking out on the other side as we speak, probably still doing big shows and big concerts and selling out in the afterlife. I would not be surprised, guys. There's always so much more to gifted people like Stevie Ray Vaughan. And trust me, I haven't even touched the surface with him. Rest in power to the legend Stevie Ray Vaughan. And with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like, that subscribe, and that notification bell. And give this a share so other people can also discover the magic. See you guys soon. Much love.